What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you're having an amazing day in today's video. We are going to be taking a look at One UI 2.1. So again, know here you don't get any kind of One UI 2.5 or anything with the Galaxy S20. It's just a minor upgrade over the Galaxy S10 as all the years that Samsung experience has been rolling out. So over here, there are not a lot of changes, but there are some worthy mentions when compared to the Galaxy S10 Plus. Android 10 update. So for example, over here on the right hand, as you can see, of course, the S20 plus with the minute hole punch display and the massive hole punch display on the S10 plus. Like I do actually love the S10 plus one. It just looks much more futuristic. And whenever I send screenshots to anyone, it just looks like a massive flex. But just taking a look at the UI and everything, everything just looks the same. Well, everything looks like a massive motion blur on the S20 plus cause of 120 Hertz display. But as you can see, pretty much all the UI is just looking as similar as before. In terms of toggles, you do get live caption cause. This this is one of the first phones which are not pixel to have the live caption so quite the good feature over there but in terms of another toggles you do have this music share which is nothing revolutionary but you do get this built in onto your phone well basically it just lets you use your friends phone speakers or anything in order to play music at once which is again pretty great as you can see as the visual says right over there then again you do get this quick share right over here which again use same technology as the wi-fi direct but doesn't use the wi-fi direct so for example once you turn it on you get quite the similar options as me share or apple's airdrop so for example you can send it to contacts only or everyone just like airdrop once you use the airdrop you can just pretty much send anything to any iphone and this again goes up to 80 mbps just like the me share which again shares up to 82 mbps between your realme oppo xiaomi pc yep up to like five different platforms Whereas oh yeah, you can only send this from Samsung to Samsung. Well, with the Android 11, you would be getting an option to pretty much like all the Android phones, but just as if yet, it only supports S20 to S20. So again, just coming back, screen record and everything are just the same. You do get the power button right over here as the Bixby Home has been completely repressed right over here, but you do get a different power menu as you can see with the darker shade onto the power home. If you just configure it, again, you have the side key settings right over there which is nothing like that on the Galaxy S10. So again, the scrolling and everything just looks and feels much more better. As you can see, the animations are far more better. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not using gestures on the S20, it's cause the phone is just extremely tall and I have actually flicked it like that quite a few times. So I'm just scared to use it like that. Again, over here, if you just take a look at the animations, as you can see, far more smoother on the S20 plus and the scrolling. I mean, I'm actually recording this in the 60 FPS, but if you just look over here, it's just like far more smoother than the S10 Plus. Again, both of these are on the performance mode. So let's just try Exynos 9820 versus 1990 Instagram. Quite fast over there on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Let's just try a system app like File Manager 321. As you can see, much more faster on the Exynos 990. So quite the upgrade right over there. Again, in terms of you, as I told you guys, pretty much just nothing. You have the Samsung Daily, which just keeps on refreshing each and every single time you just open it. Then again, going through the camera, this might be a bit specific as a Galaxy S20 is very camera centric. But I do actually feel Galaxy S10 has far more sensible options. So for example, you do have your normal wide angle and everything, which is like far more smoother experience than the S10 Plus, as you can see. S10 Plus is quite faster to switch between lenses, but it just doesn't look as smooth as before. But as you can see, the 3X zoom when compared to the 2X, when it actually switches to the telephoto, but then again, you have the 30X, which is not really that usable, to be honest. Up till like 20, yeah, you can actually get quite a lot of detail. But going through modes and everything, you still get all the same stuff, like even through the Pro mode and everything. Now on the S10 Plus, you do get the option for the shiftable aperture, which was quite revolutionary in phone tech. But now it's just completely gone and given up for a much more larger sensor at f1.8. So you get much more better bokeh and much more sharper image than the f1.5 as the focal length is much more wider. So that's pretty good. Again, with the F1.8, the highlights are much more better detailed than the Galaxy S10 Plus. But again, over here you have the single tech, which again could be coming with the Galaxy S10 Plus 2 with the Android R update. But basically, it will record something like for 10 seconds and get you best shots, like for example, bokeh, video, boomerangs, and everything, whatever the phone likes. Now, currently there is nothing moving into the frame, but as soon as it just detects anything, it will actually make a collage of it. As you can see, you have quite a lot of takes right over there. Then again, coming back, if you just go to the video, pretty much both of them have same video options. And in terms of another options, you do get the 8K button right over there. Quite handy to be honest, but I just feel a resolution option should be added as this phone supports a variety of it. But then again, you have the AR doodle and everything. Again, AR zone is much more optimized on the Galaxy S20 Plus having the TOF sensor, but uh, video quality again, 
pretty much same on both, just the 8K matters, which is quite stuttery at 24 FPS, but live focus video is much more again enhanced thanks to that TOF sensor, then again you have slow motion, super slow mo, just everything as similar as before, but you do get AR emoji whereas compared to the AR zone, which has much more non-human options, but just pretty much same things. But one thing that I love about the Galaxy S10 Plus is, and I hopefully think whenever I get my Galaxy S20 Ultra, it has been fixed. If you just go to settings on both of them, as you can see, quite a lot of different options right over there. Like for example, you have the smart selfie take, which again switches to the wide angle if it detects two faces, which is quite good to be honest, cause I always prefer wider angle. Then again, scrolling down video stabilization, and then you have the auto HDR. Like why Samsung? I just don't know. I love Samsung's HDR, but you know, if you go to it, you can select it for always apply on the Galaxy 10 Plus, which I really recommend versus the auto HDR. Now, as the option of always apply HDR has been completely removed from the S20, this is a wide angle image on the S20 Plus. And this is one on the S10 Plus. You can notice how the shadows are much more detailed on the S10 Plus thanks to that always apply HDR. So I really think that comes back. Again, all the remaining features still stay the same as you can see, pretty much nothing changed right over there. But I really think always apply HDR must come back. Now again, going through the gallery and stuff. Again, as you can see, Samsung keeps on shifting between recycle bin and the trash. They just keep on renaming it. But you now if you just go to the pictures, then you get grouping of it, which is like much more helpful to be honest. So for example, basically if you just tap this option, it will combine bunch of the images which are taken pretty much the same time. So for example, if I just click it, as you can see, bunch of the images have now completely disappeared. So for example, if I just open this one, it has both of the night shots, which are pretty much taken at the same time. It also has my scooter photos, which were taken with auto and the night mode, like look at that. That's a day and night of difference, but now they are completely in one group. Again, can be ungrouped with a one tap. So really a great option right over there. But going through more options like with the UI, you do have live caption button right over there, which is not present on the S10 Plus. So quite good over there, but let's just go through the settings app. Again, as you can see, pretty much the UI is just same on both of them. But as you go into sounds and vibrations, you have this massive tab right over there of the main option, which would be sound, vibrate and mute. Now the vibration motors on the S20 Plus are far more better when compared to the S10 or any kind of previous Samsung phones. But now if you go to the display, you have right over there, light and dark. So dark mode has been completely implemented right over here, thanks to Android 10. And also it kind of reminds me of iOS. It's just right in there. So dark mode completely switches with very smooth animations. Whereas compared on the Galaxy S10, it's just a flip with a stutter. I mean, if you go to the dark mode settings, pretty much everything is just the same. As you can see, no real world usage changed. Again, you have blue light filter, higher refresh rate, which would be coming with the Quad HD into upcoming months. Hope to see that soon. And pretty much everything is just the same. Nothing changed at all. And if you go back, wallpapers, themes, everything is just the same. But if you just go to the wallpapers, if you just select anything from, wow, this does look different. So apply dark mode to the wallpaper has been added. If you just go to the gallery and select any kind of image as your wallpaper. What the hell? It, why did it just crash? Home screen and lock screens. Option for Sigma edits is now back on the S20. So if you just unbox your S20, you have the motion effect. Once you update all the apps from the Galaxy store, it would come back just like the Galaxy S10 Plus. So point to be noted, in order to get all the features, just do update all of your apps. Then again, biometrics and security, privacy, everything is just same as before. Nothing touched at all. If you go to the advanced features, you do have Bixby routine, side key. Again, everything as the latest update. So if you just go back completely, you have digital well-being right over here. So again, over here, you have the volume monitor, which something like we have seen on the China bit of Xiaomi. So basically much more helpful option for basically people like me who have earphones 24 seven in their ear. You can read more on that by pausing this video. But let's just go back. Your software update, general management and input device care. Keyboard does actually seem a bit better on the S20 Plus. That may be cause of the 120 Hz and the display being very tall. But device care is just completely the same as you can see. Security has been provided by McAfee on both of them. Sometimes it's just 360. But going to the upper phone section. One year 2.1 versus one year 2.0, quite the tongue twister right over there. Kernel version is 4.19, so the latest and greatest on the S20 Plus. And 
February 1 patch on both of them. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it for the one year 2.1 update. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you found this helpful, please drop a like. That would be a lot of help. And see you guys in the next one. Peace.